Hmm, you're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. Could you... make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub -Zero's festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay, my wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years? A hundred years? I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but... <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh! You're. What? Fucky? Sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Tia! Oh, right! This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers! Huh? But Tia can handle them! Hey, Traveler! Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth, and those that come across Lior tend to stay a while, so it is where many things come to settle. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right, knock... Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. 
Nahida both. Dinyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey. The windows are unlocked! Okay. Uh, Paimon's gonna take a p This was only a temporary resident. Should we open it? Wow. Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us, even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the sub festival, and had all her health problems to worry about. She must have wanted to give this to us as a if we hadn't found this book. We never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even think her. Hey! Where are you off to now? It's Dunyarzad's puppet. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dick. There will always be frustrations in life. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. 
What is it? Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, what? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Uh, traveler? Uh, Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait, they're not reacting! Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course! If this... So they're just substitute. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? <laughs> like I said, they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers. It's just a shame that all the real Bodhisars went extinct after her death. Yes, the Greater Lord brought... shade of purple. Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? <gasps> but didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, how? Yeah. What's going... Uh, uh-huh? You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm... They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore! But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage! It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assume there will be food on a plate, and so when you saw the flowers... But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're... How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzerus Festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Eh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the First Sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the First Sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the First Sage yet. 
There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the First Sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be... The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Ark. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub Zero's festival is almost over too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub Zero's as beautiful as we can. <laughs> the wait is over, everyone. I dedicate this to our god, the dance of Subzerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilu's dance. Oh, 
Oh, a uh, traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream, and I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. 